Hello, today I'm going to be testing and comparing two solar MPP boosters. This MPT 2710A I've had for several years. It's fairly common. It has a fan, as you just heard, when a leaf blew in. And I just bought this new one, the Eljoy ELMU. 400 SP and I'm here in Denver Colorado just got this yesterday the new MPPT and it's gonna be cloudy for a few days so it's kind of windy and cold and partial overcast today but I'm gonna do this test so that I can get an idea so in what I've heard is that uh, this Eljoy is supposed to have much better performance when you're boosting higher voltage than this old MPT. And uh, it's also sealed, a lot more rugged, and it has uh, voltage input and amps and output volts and amps. So it's kind of nice from that standpoint as well. So currently in this sun, I'm getting about 106 watts, 110 peak. And it's varying a little bit with the clouds. And one thing I wanted to test and show is how long it takes to respond when I put my hand over one panel. So I'm going to shade and you can see how that affects the watts. It goes down to about 76. Now the sun's getting brighter. So I actually did a pretty good job there keeping the wattage good. Now, previously when I tested this without clouds, this old uh, green one, I got 140 watts peak. So right even with the sun, I'm close to that peak wattage. Um, one thing that uh, people have talked about is how long it takes for this MPT 7210A to uh, get back up to higher currents when panels are shaded. So I'm going to do a little quick walk in front of the panels and then come back and see where we're at. So we're at 2.4 amps right now. Come around, do a nice little walk. Come back and check again. Ah, oh, did a good job. It does take a little bit of time to ramp up. I'll show that. here turn it off now i have this this is a 20 watt um, maximum power point panel and i have this green one set for a 20 watt panel and that is important apparently you want to set the target for this green mppt to what the panel's maximum power point is it's not very good at finding that on its own so now it's been several seconds and you can see that the Watts are starting to crank up, but uh, does take quite a long time. We're only at 28 watts. 40. Of course, I didn't look at how long this is actually taking, but looks like it's going to take on the order of over 30 seconds. Gosh. We at here 96 98 100 kind of boring waiting for this to come up 107 is what it's at slowly slowly coming back up I'll uh, put a little comment on there how many seconds it takes when I edit this Still only at 100 watts. Maybe that's all that we're getting from the clouds right now. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna end the test on this. Now I have to disconnect the wires and that's another thing I don't like about this older model is that the connections are little terminal blocks inside and it's very fragile and hard to get bigger gauge wiring into those terminal blocks. 
to 100 watts. Oh, you know why? That's because the battery is almost at full voltage. Okay, gonna end this test and switch it over. Okay, okay, I've uh, connected the Eljoy, Eljoy, and hopefully we can read the numbers here. It's currently outputting 19.7 volts and right around eight amps. And you can see battery output is 58 and 2.67 amps, uh, which is high for that voltage, I would say, um, in terms of uh, having a normal lith lithium ion charging cycle. But let's see how it does on this last bit. Um, so I actually don't know if the input voltage is, amperage is being limited by the output at this point um, during the constant voltage phase. I have it set for 58.8 volts, which is for 14S full capacity, and I'm using it to charge an Ego 5 amp hour battery. Unfortunately, it's quite close to being full already. Uh, here we've uh, got some debris on the panel. Let's wipe that off. It's kind of windy today and not the best test conditions, but uh, like I said in the other test, it's basically what I got and it's going to be cloudy for the next few days. So I wanted to get this tested since I just received it. Um, Well, we're at 58 volts, two amps charging, and the panel is right at optimal voltage, and it's doing six amps at the moment. It's a little bit lower performance than what I was getting out of the previous panel, but here's what I'm working with with the clouds. So we're currently 58.3 and still at over two amps current. I'm gonna do a test where I walk in front of the panels to do some shading and then come back and check the output. And we're at very much the same. So at least today, both of them did well in that test. The, this one and the previous green MPT-7210A. I'm gonna stop with this video and see what happens when it reaches 58.8 volt output. Well, I apologize for the dumpster pull, uh, dumper that just came up and is making all the racket, but I lowered the set point to 58 and uh, it's saying that that's the output now that I have the battery connected again. And um, so after I disconnected the battery, it went down to zero and let me reset the set point. Um, when I replugged it back in, it came back at 58 volts. So it's currently not at full charge, but it's at my set point and it's still putting one amp into the battery. Um, maybe the set point needs to be lower than the total full 4.2 volts per cell, but uh, we'll see. I, I'll have to pause the video again and see what happens after a few more minutes and we'll wait for this truck to uh, shut up. But I did want to comment a couple more things on this unit. Um, these uh, connectors are much easier to deal with than those terminal blocks on the MPT-7210. Uh, and um, they, I'm using a 12 
gauge uh, XT60 pigtail. And I managed to get those in. I had to strip all the insulation off uh, to get the wires into the end and then clamp it in with those little clamps. But it uh, worked out great. I'm using a piece of an extension cord for the solar panel connection. Anyway, let's see where we're at before I shut this off. 58 and dropping down to less than an amp. That's not bad. I'd like to see what it does in a few more minutes. So I'm going to stop the video again and come back and let you know what the final judgment is. So the output after several minutes is dropping slowly. One of the set point at 58 and uh, it's currently at 0.8 amps. Um, the interesting thing is, is that it's about the same even though the sun has gone behind a darker cloud and it's noticeably less sunny right now. So that's kind of a nice result to see that the MPPT um, tracks and keeps that voltage close to the optimal 20 volts maximum power point. Now the uh, voltage, the amps on the output have dropped down to 0 0.77 and um, still showing uh, 58.0 as the output. I'm going to hook up another meter I brought out <coughs> to the battery um, and compare the output uh, of the battery and make sure it's not actually higher than that. Okay. If another couple minutes, the sun will come back out and we'll get a nice full sun. And I'm going to look at the current one more time. And I'll pause the video here again. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap up this test. The sun is not going to get back into a clear sky for quite a while. And as you can see, my uh, Ego battery is full, pretty much. Um, it's at verified with the second meter here. It's at 58.04 volts, and this is consistent with the LL Ella Joy. Um, the current output has slowly dropped, and I did watch it as it got brighter again, and uh, the uh, input amps and the output amps both were unaffected by the amount of sun brightness or intensity there. So it is ramping down um, slowly uh, with my set point at 58 volts. Um, so let me summarize uh, the, the advantages I see at this point from the Ella Joy is that it's a sealed box. It's much more rugged, um, doesn't make any noise. I wasn't able to confirm that it has a higher current output because uh, my battery was almost full when I started the test and um, they both basically got to about 140 watts input and output, I mean output voltage. Um, so that I can't say if it could actually um, approach closer to the 200 watts uh, rated output of the all powers panel. Um, I didn't talk much about the panel uh, because uh, I did another video when they got it several weeks ago with, but I am really impressed with the build quality of that and portability and weight. Um, so hopefully uh, when I have uh, better conditions to test uh, and, a, and a, a battery that needs more of a charge, I'll be able to verify that this does in fact um, boost more efficiently than the older fan model. In terms of the specs, um, the efficiency I've gotten out of the MPT 7210A is 85% and the rated efficiency of the Elejoy is 97%. So that's quite a bit different and also probably why it doesn't need to have a fan. But you can see the box has uh, cooling fins and quite a big metal housing to uh, passively radiate away 
the heat that is generated. So I like it, um, but unfortunately today I was not able to verify that it can output more than about seven amps. Um, I mean, it, that it can boost more than seven amps to my uh, 58 volts output voltage or a charge of 14S battery. Anyway, I um, hope that this has been helpful to anyone else that's looking for a booster in this power class. Um, they're both around the same price, $50 approximately. Um, the Elejoy, I was only able to find it shipped direct from China. Uh, I, had, I couldn't find anyone that had it in stock in the U.S. And I do think it's relatively new. It's new to me. Um, uh, in the last couple of years since I bought this older green model. Uh, I love that it doesn't have a fan. It seems way more ruggedized than the MPT-7210A. Um, and the uh, terminal blocks are much easier to work with and should handle more, um, you know, abuse of rattling around. Uh, if you're going to be using this kind of in a portable camping type setup and just having it be dust proof and waterproof uh, and much more rugged is very important for that. I guess that's all for now. I'm going to wrap it up and uh, anyway, hopefully uh, it'll work out good for my camping later this summer.